Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy here today for Lawn Fawn and I'm going to be sharing with you today a spooky flippin' awesome card just in time for Halloween. I'm going to start off by doing some Copic coloring. Here I have images stamped from Happy Harvest, which is that wagon that I'm coloring now. Pick of the Patch, which are the pumpkins and the carving knife and the spoon. And then some Yetis from Yeti or Not. I stamped the images onto white cardstock from Lawn Fawn, and they are stamped in jet black ink, which is Copic friendly. With the Flippin' Awesome die, I think it's really fun to flip through that like it's telling a story, and that is what my card is going to be today. My story is going to be about the Yeti picking a pumpkin and then carving it out, scooping out the pumpkin, and it's going to end with it all set and ready for Halloween. My original plan was to use the squirrels from the Pick of the Patch stamp set, and I had the Yetis sitting out on my table and just thought it would be a really fun idea to have the Yetis doing this. They are not only great for snow scenes, but they can make cute little monsters, so you could color them up in any color and make them a monster for Halloween. I did leave them kind of a white color, uh, only because it helped break up my background since I do have a lot of ink blending and color going on in my background. For coloring the Yetis, I'm just doing a dot technique. So I have three colors of Copic markers there and I'm adding the darkest color to my shadow areas and just doing that in little dots. That kind of gives the Yeti a little bit of texture and it's leaving it mainly white, which is what I wanted to do. Then to tie in some Halloween colors, I did give the Yeti some green horns, which are the same colors I used for my pumpkin stems. Then taking the coordinating dies and holding them in place with some low tack tape, I'll go ahead and run this through my die cutting machine. And here are all my pieces cut out and I'm gonna set off on the side while I work on my background. Next, this is going to be the main background piece for my card. And I'm gonna be doing some ink blending I'm starting off with Salty Ocean Distress Oxide Ink with a blending brush, and I'm just lightly applying that a little bit in the, kind of in the middle. I know I'm gonna have that bottom area covered up, so I'm not going all the way down, and I'm gonna just lightly ink blend that. Then I'll come in with a Blueprint Sketch, and I'm gonna add that the blueprint sketch kind of has a purple tone to it, which I thought just really added into the spooky Halloween background that I was going for. And I'm blending that into that salty ocean. You do have to kind of go over it a couple times to really get it to blend. So if you feel you're not getting a good blend right away, just keep working those colors. I do go back and forth between my colors to help just make that a smooth transition. Next is going to be the chipped sapphire, and this really packs the punch to the background where it adds that dark edge all the way around. And then I will go back and forth between the two just to kind of even that out a little bit. Once I'm happy with my blend, I'm going to add some stars to my background, and I'm going to be using the Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust. You want to make sure you shake this up really well because that does settle at the bottom of the bottle. So once I have that nice and shook up, I'm gonna just kind of squeeze some off into the side there in that little tray. I'm going to add a couple drops of water. I do want this uh, pretty liquefied because I want it to spread out really well. So once I mix that up, I'm just taking my paintbrush and flicking that all over my background. And to add a little contrast, I'm also going to add in some gold stars. So this is the Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors. I'm using that first color there, just adding a little bit of water to it, and then mixing that with my paintbrush. You want it just kind of a, a creamy texture, enough so that you can splatter that on your background and still have that nice bright gold color. And I would recommend kind of having some paper towel up above wherever you're working because I, I was cleaning speckles off of my craft mat for quite a while but it's such a beautiful effect. Here's a close-up of the background and that's just beautiful for a starry night sky. 
Now I'm going to work on my pieces for the flippin' awesome scene that I'm creating. I went ahead and die cut four of these squares using the flippin' awesome die, and I did that just out of the white cardstock. There are a couple different sizes. There's the main piece, which is what I have here, and then there's a smaller piece with a stitched edge to it. I'm using the main one because this gave me more room to create my scene. And I'm going to go through and just repeat the same process as I did for my background using the Salty Ocean, the Blueprint Sketch, and the Chipped Sapphire Distress Oxide inks. You could also use regular inks or the Distress inks. Uh, I like the oxides because they blend really nice and they also react with water. So that's a great reason for using them. It kind of gives that starry effect if you didn't have any of the liquid stardust yet or the gold paint. Now you'll notice I do have one kind of off in the corner there on the left hand side and that was because I didn't add the blueprint sketch to it. I was trying to skip a color uh, but I did go back and add it because it, it really did add that nice kind of purple blue tint to the colors. So just finishing up with my blending, you notice that I'm not going all the way down to the bottom because I'm going to have a stitched hill down there. So I'm not worried about that. You could ink blend an entire panel and then trim that out with the die, but I just personally think this is easier. And then I can line them up all in a row and I'm going to do the same thing where I'm adding that liquid stardust and then I'll come in with the gold paint and add all of that beautiful starry sky background. And then I do set these off on the side to dry for a little while. You could also speed that process up with your heat tool if you want to as well. Here I have cilantro cardstock that I die cut using the stitched hillside border. So I have one big one there that's four and a quarter. Uh, I'm sorry, that measures five and a half inches long. That's going to be for my card front. And then I have four smaller ones that I die cut using that square die from the Flippin' Awesome die. So that's gonna match exactly in the size I need to for my scene. And I'm just adding in some Pine Needles Distress Oxide ink. And I know it looks pretty drastic here and that's exactly what I wanted. I know a lot of it is going to get covered up, but I think sometimes just having that little bit of extra to it does really help make your scenes pop, even though a lot of it's going to get covered up. Now working on completing my background, I went ahead and die cut a spooky fence out of black glitter cardstock and that is out of the Autumn Collection from Lawn Fawn. I just added tape runner to the back of that and added that right down to my panel. Now I didn't do it here, but you want to make sure you actually have adhesive on all of those pokey parts at the top uh, only because it does catch a little bit and I didn't think about that when I was working on this. So you want to make sure that whole thing is glued down really well. And then just adding some double-sided adhesive to my hillside to attach that to the glitter cardstock. And now I'm going to work on my Lawn Fawn Flippin' Awesome uh, interactive piece. So I die cut that out of black cardstock and I'm just going to go along all of those scored lines, fold them over, and reinforce that with the bone folder. You really want to make sure you reinforce this. The better reinforced these are, uh, the smoother your interactive card is going to work. So once I went through it, I flipped it over, flipped it over, reinforced it the other way, and you can see it's really bendy. It really moves. Also fold all over those two tabs. That is what's going to attach to our card front. Then I'm taking the double-sided tape, just adding that to my two tabs. And I also run along those individual strips with a fold line. So I'm putting that tape right up next to my fold piece. And then also on this main square, which is going to be the end scene for my card. You could just use tape runner there. I just really prefer the double-sided tape. And so I'll go ahead and remove that backing. And I'm adding one of my cards. I like to prop up my fold and make sure that's really flush against that fold line. And then it dawned on me, I did not put my scene together yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm taking all of my pieces that I had colored and die cut before, and I'm going to start gluing them together, uh, matching up what scenes I want. 
So my first scene on my card is going to be that wagon of pumpkins. I could have also added a Yeti to that, but I thought the wagon of pumpkins was enough for that first card. And then my second scene is going to be my Yeti with the carving knife. And he's going to have his own little pumpkin. So I can go ahead and just attach that with some liquid glue. And my third scene is going to be my Yeti scooping out the pumpkin. The Pick of the Patch stamp set also has different faces that you can add to your pumpkins. And I will be doing that here shortly to the one that's going to go in my end scene. So the Yeti that's going to be all happy that his pumpkin is done. And I'm just going to take one of the faces and I'm going to attach that to an acrylic block and I'm going to stamp that onto the front of my plain pumpkin with some jet black ink. So just inking that up really well, lining that up in the middle and then stamping that down. And then I can add that to my last panel there. That'll be my end scene. So now I can finish putting my interactive part of the card together. So I'll be removing the backing of those strips. I'll take one of my panels and I'm going to just kind of fold my card up a little bit and my panel will be flush with that edge. Now you'll notice my backgrounds. Uh, I have the hillside there and I also die cut out more of that spooky fence and added it to those panels just like I had done for the front of the cardstock so it all matches. Then I can fold that large piece over, bring my tabs out, and that's how our interactive portion is going to look. I'll go ahead and remove the backing on that. And this actually worked out really well that my fence kind of lined up where I wanted it to. That was pure luck. I did not plan that. And it's also leaving me room on the top and the bottom for a sentiment. So then I can test this out, sliding that through for this fun little scene. And that's all that's holding it in place are those two tabs, which I think is just brilliant. Now I did decide that my tab that pulls out there was a little too plain. So I repeated the same process I did for my background. And I did that on this piece of cardstock that I die cut using the Flippin' Awesome add-on. And when you do this, you want to make sure you pull that all the way out, your tab, and you tuck that piece underneath your last panel. Otherwise, it's going to catch and you won't be able to move your piece back and forth. This is also great for a gift card, but I really like it for just an extra scene. So off screen, I did go ahead and stamp out my sentiments. I did this on the black licorice cardstock and heat embossed with white embossing powder. Both of these sentiments come from the Spooky Village stamp set. And then I had a die cut them out with the Everyday Sentiment banner die. And I'm just taking a tape runner and adding a sentiment to the top that says Happy Halloween. And from our patch to yours at the bottom. And I love the black stands out really well against my spooky sky background. I also had gone ahead and stamped out and colored some images uh, off of Spooky Village and Spectac Sp Spooktacular. So I'm adding those in there just as little elements. You could totally leave these off, but I just thought having the moon there and a couple of the bats really added to my spooky scene. Now you're going to notice here in just a moment when I start pulling my tab to show you the flippin' awesome piece is that I have black cardstock in there. I didn't think of it when I was ink blending that you're going to see the ink blending on the other side of those panels. So I just took some black cardstock, cut it to the size of the area I needed to cover so that it looks a little better. It's a little cleaner looking since I do get pretty messy with my oxides. So once we start flipping through, you can see I have black cardstock there to kind of cover up and clean that up a little bit. So here it is in action. Also, I want to note that my pumpkin closest to the Yeti there on that last panel, I should probably have tucked that underneath as well because it did catch a little bit. This definitely still works. It's a lot of fun. I'm so happy with how this all turned out. And I love being able to kind of tell a story with the Flip and Awesome die. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and creating this spooky background with the Flip and Awesome die.
Thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.